clouds. Do you ever see pictures in the clouds? Things like faces or animals? Sometimes clouds just look like clouds. My friend Brian once saw a cloud that looked so much like a steam engine, it haunts him to this very day. Watching clouds can also help you think the way a long walk helps you think. For example, I'm a biologist, and I like to think about the nature of species. So let's think about this. Are clouds like biological species? Both, after all, can look like discrete things. Clouds have boundaries. They are white or gray, not blue like the sky. The edges of a cloud may be fuzzy, but it's usually clear to which cloud center a particular fuzzy edge belongs. The center of a thing is more essential to a thing than its edges are. Species also have fuzzy edges, vagrants, and individuals that do not reproduce or contribute to the lineage, so to speak. For a species, the center is the thing that traces the lineage. But what if the center fails to remain central? The most lineage-like clouds are unnatural contrails created by jumbo jets. They disrupt the organic feeling of the sky, like power lines do. Sometimes we see clouds at different levels in the atmosphere. Do species exist at different levels, or all on the same plane? Even in a ceiling of solid cloud, there can be darker places, more cloudy than their surroundings. Are these subclouds, something like subspecies? Lacking clear boundaries, are these darker areas real? They look real. Clouds change shape, they grow, they shrink. They split in two or bud off into new clouds. They become more impressive or more wispy. Sometimes they introgress. Like species, clouds can also go extinct. Like a splash of milk dissolving in light blue sky coffee. On the other hand, clouds don't come from other clouds. They just condense from the air around them. Species don't condense, I don't think. Or do they? Perhaps a new species condenses within the parent species. On islands, a species can condense from a single individual, a nucleus of condensation. Are there primitive clouds and advanced clouds? I don't think a cladistic classification of clouds is a very good idea. Ecologically, how do clouds interact? Do they compete with one another for water vapor or access to condensation? Does the shade from high clouds prevent the formation of low clouds? Are there invasive clouds? Should we be concerned about the ecological integrity of clouds? Should national parks be preserving their clouds? How would you do that? Clouds don't have interests or agency, do they? They do seem to lose something when they rain, even though something else called it is the thing that rains, apparently. It is raining. Why not give credit to the clouds? Some storm clouds are said to have too much energy. Can a species have too much energy? Are successful species biological storms? Clouds make more sense when you speed them up, and so do species. At normal speed, clouds become the background, and species too look like finished products. Cloud watching makes background into foreground. It questions our assumptions. My friends Ian and Melissa both paint beautiful cloudscapes. Melissa likes subtle colors and rhythmic patterns in the sky. Her husband James is a longtime friend and colleague, and he studies ants. In fact, I have a number of friends who paint cloudscapes, and a number of friends who study species, including ants. And I live in a place with interesting clouds. I guess I'm just a fortunate kind of guy.